You'll recall from my last video that I'm making an Intellivision clone using an FPGA. So here's my terrible setup here. There's the development board connected to the pipe blaster. Terrible wiring job. And this is all connected to a VGA monitor that I borrowed from work. And what we'll be working on today is getting the video capabilities of the Intellivision. Now, before we start the demos, um, it's probably a good idea to basically explain how the graphics works to begin with. Now, whether we're talking about the NES, the ColecoVision, the Intellivision, or other 8-bit systems, they all have something in common. They are all tile-based systems when it comes to their graphics. Now, sometimes the terminology will differ, but these type of systems use two different types of memory in order to display their graphics, the name table and the pattern table. The name table points to the pattern and the pattern table contains the pattern. I said earlier that sometimes the terminology differs. In the Intellivision, the system RAM acts as the name table. And as far as the pattern table goes, it's divided into two different blocks, the GROM and the GRAM. The GROM contains predefined patterns, like your alphabet and your numbers. And the GRAM is used for user-defined graphics. All right, um, I'm going to configure the first demo. So what we have here is basically a screen dump of the GROM. We're sequencing through um, the different tiles in order to show all the possible predefined characters. And you can see that they have the alphanumeric stuff, of course, uppercase, lowercase numbers. But what's interesting to me are all those uh, sort of symbols that uh, you could use like for in-game graphics towards the bottom. The first example was monochrome, just green and black. That's because out of the three RGB pins on the VGA, I only had the green connected, but I've since connected red and blue as well. So now we should have some color and I'll configure that example now. So over here uh, is the seven colors I support now, including the background. So the background is cyan or turquoise and I'm supporting black, blue, red, green, yellow, and white. Earlier, I had said that it'd be interesting to use some of the predefined characters, like in order to do a nice background display. Um, so I'll show you what I came up with now. So this is kind of like a cityscape here. Um, Basically, it's the same color scheme that the game Night Stalker has. So on the bottom, I use the predefined graphics to basically do like uh, like high rises and like different buildings. And then the background is uh, blue. Anyway, I think it looks pretty cool. Up until now, we've looked at background tiles. But the other element that makes up the graphics are the sprites. I implemented sprites using two line buffers. For the first line buffer, we look ahead to the next scan line and copy any sprite pixels to the line buffer. Meanwhile, the second line buffer displays the sprite pixels for the current line. And then we alternate. And for our first sprite demonstration, I've added a squadron of fighter jets to the city skyline. People celebrate the 16-bit era systems like the Sega Genesis and the Neo Geo for their sprite scaling abilities. But the Intellivision was doing this back in 1979. In terms of horizontal scaling, there is support for times one and times two sizes. For vertical scaling, times one, times two, times four, and even times eight sizes are supported. For flipping, both horizontal and vertical flipping are supported by the Intellivision. So when developing the FPGA core, 
I had to build in this support as well. This is a demonstration of horizontal scaling. You'll see the sprites stretched to times two size. And this is our demonstration of vertical scaling. At the beginning of the screen, we begin at the times one size. Then you will see things stretch to times two, times four, and times eight. And now for flipping. Here we undergo four different combinations of horizontal and vertical flipping. Up until now, I've only used the predefined graphics stored in the Intellivision's GROM memory. But to really unlock the full potential, we have to make use of the GRAM for user-defined graphics. So what I did was shamelessly steal the brick patterns from Sydney Hunter and program them into the GRAM. Then I designed a skeleton character using old school methods, of course. And this is the end result. A crew of skeleton ne'er-do-wells terrorizing the town. So that was Intellivision graphics generated on an FPGA. So what's the next step? I guess the next step is to create a top level that combines this graphics core with the processor core I generated earlier this year and then try to make uh, the full in television. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you like these kind of videos, uh, please hit subscribe and like and all that good stuff. Thanks.